Greetings from Academia IABS and eConnect. This channel represents an initiative, eConnect of Academia IABS and with an aim to engage students, experts and citizens around pressing public health issues. Subsequent to the public health update module for the month of August 2021, we, the team for stallers, humbly present before you the public health update series for the month of September 2021. The contents of this video will be dealt in five parts. The first part dealing with days of public health importance. Second part dealing with diseases to be eliminated by 2030. Third part dealing with communicable diseases. Fourth part dealing with digital health. And finally, COVID-19 update pertaining to reopening of schools. Moving on to the first part. I'm Dr. Lavanya from Indira Gandhi Medical College and Research Institute Puducherry. I shall be discussing the important health days the month of September and the updates pertaining to it. The National Nutrition Week was celebrated in India from September 1 to 7. The theme for this year was Feeding Smart right from the start. On 29 September, the existing midday meal scheme was upgraded and relaunched as PM portion with the additional inclusion of preschool children in this scheme. The new scheme proposes to appoint a new cadre of staff called the nutritional experts at schools. The nutritional experts will monitor the BMI, hemoglobin and weight of the students. It has also introduced the concept of Titi Bojan, wherein students from private schools will be encouraged to share their meals with children from marginalized sections at least once in a month on a voluntary basis. The first state food safety index for the year 2018 to 19 was announced on World Food Safety Day on 7th June 2019. Now, this year, on 29th September, FSSAI released the third state food safety index based on the overall performance of the states and union territories on five parameters of food safety. The parameters include availability of human resources like food safety officers, Coverage of food businesses with license. Availability of food testing labs. Training of lab personnel and food safety supervisors. Consumer empowerment initiatives such as Eat Right Campus and hygiene rating of restaurants. Congratulations to Gujarat, Kerala and Tamil Nadu as they are the top three ranked states in this third version of the index. With such positive competition among the states, we hope to improve the systems around food safety in India in coming years. Logo for vegan foods was launched for easy identification and distinction from non-vegan foods. This logo will aid the consumers in making informed food choices. Now, let us examine the updates released on World Rabies Day 2021. World Rabies Day is observed on 28th September every year and the theme for this year is Rabies, Fats, Not Fear. Rabies is a classic One Health challenge. Being a neglected tropical disease with underreporting of cases, various organizations have been advocating for improvement in surveillance of rabies. In a landmark move on 20th September, human rabies was made a notifiable disease in India under Clinical Establishment Act 2010. So now, all government and private health facilities, including medical colleges, are expected to electronically report all suspected, probable and confirmed human rabies cases. Notification will facilitate tracing of other people exposed to the same source and prompt prophylactic measures. Also, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare on 29 September unveiled the National Action Plan for Dog-Mediated Rabies Elimination by 2030 with a goal to reduce human deaths due to dog-mediated rabies to zero by 2030. I am Dr. Vinodhini from Institute of Medical Sciences, Banaras Hindu University. The next important public health day in the month of September is World Patient Safety Day, which is observed on 17 September every year with the goal of improving patient safety at the point of health service delivery. Each year, a campaign is launched on a specific patient safety related theme. Theme for the year 2021 is safe and a respectful maternal and newborn care. This theme came up because 
despite the progress made in reduction of maternal and newborn mortality the world is far from achieving the target which is laid out in the sdgs a major reason for not achieving the target is failure to address unsafe and poor quality care under this theme they have set the following five goals here a special mention to goal 3 which is to promote a respectful care for safe childbirth because safe maternal and newborn care not only includes prevention and reduction of risks errors and physical harm but also encompasses protection from emotional and psychological harm let's move on to part 2 of this capsule diseases to be eliminated by 2030 the who and partners around the world have launched the first ever global strategy related with meningitis on 28th september called the global road map to defeat meningitis by 2030 the burden of meningitis in india are not reliably known because of limited disease surveillance and lab capacity let's hope this road map gets a better disease surveillance for meningococcal diseases in india thank you myself dr farhan khan from aims bhopal i will be giving update on snake bite information and data platform out of annual snake bite cases of around 5 million 1.8 to 2.7 million develops clinical illness and 0.081 to 0.138 million die from complication since nearly 70% of indian population resides in rural india it is important to prevent and control snake bite who launch 2019 2030 global strategy with an objective of empower and engage community ensure safe effective treatment strengthen health system increase partnership coordination and resources for the prevention and control of snake bite with a target of halving the halving the number of deaths and cases of disability by 2030 as its commitment to empower and engage communities who has launched a snake bite information and data platform on 15 september 2021 it enable users to with to see which species are found in different communities along with the access to up to date information on the anti venom products available for each species the platform will also help in data sharing video showing step wise data information and data feeling of snake bite will be uploaded soon in ipsm citizen channel so stay tuned and connected and url of the platform is shared in video description thank you let us now move to the case of nipa virus disease which was reported from korikor district in kerala the index case was a 12 year old boy and this was declared as an isolated case with low risk at regional and national level this is the fifth time nipah virus disease is being reported from india the first two times being from west bengal and the other two times from kerala nipah virus disease is an emerging zoonotic infection of public health importance this is because the rising deforestation increases human animal contact also Nipah virus disease has a case fatality rate which ranges between 40 to 75% and can be up to 100% if public health measures are not adequate. There is also no specific treatment available. The rise in trade and travel can cause rapid spread of infection too. So, how is a potential outbreak prevented? Immediate public health measures like contact tracing, active find, case finding and risk communication messages were initiated. A Koriko District Action Plan for Nipah Outbreak 2021 was released to all stakeholders. This included strengthening of acute encephalitis surveillance, a Nipah helpline number which was linked to Disha, which is a telehealth initiative by the government of Kerala. One or two ambulances were kept ready, and also isolation facility facilities and triage facilities were strengthened. Thus, a potential outbreak was prevented. It is important to note that currently there is no travel or trade restriction with the Nipah affected areas. This finally this also reminds us the importance of focus on the concept of one health. 
I'm Dr. Ritika Varma, postgraduate from Medicity Institute of Medical Sciences, Telangana. Moving to the care of our elders now, every 1st October is observed as International Day for Older Persons. This year, ahead of this day, on 28th September, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment launched a Pan-India Elderly Helpline number, which is 14567, and it is named as Elder Line. Tata Trust and NCE Foundation are supporting the ministry in operationalizing the elder line as technical partners. It is devised to provide senior citizens the information and guidance on problems that they may be facing in daily life. The guidance covers legal issues, financial aspects such as pension issues, health issues, social issues and it will also facilitate the rescue of homeless elderly. It is currently operational in 17 states of India and is likely to start soon in rest of the states. Now, the next update is on the National Comprehensive Guidelines for the Management of Post-COVID Sequelae, which was released by our Honorable Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia on 23rd September. As we enter the second year of pandemic, it has been found that patients have been experiencing short to long term sequelae of the disease. Scope of this document is to guide doctors on managing post-COVID complications affecting the cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, nephrological, neurological and long term respiratory effects of COVID-19. This guideline also has a module on the mental health which is of utmost importance to have a detailed uh, look of these guidelines, please uh, visit the link which is provided below. Thank you. I am Dr. Emmanuel Joshua from Institute of Medical Sciences, Banaras Hindi University. The next update on digital health is Aishman Bharat Digital Mission, which was launched by our Prime Minister on 27 September 2021. The mission was piloted successfully in six union territories in the name of National Digital Health Mission. Now it's been rolled out nationally with a vision to create a digital health ecosystem that supports universal health coverage that is timely, accessible, inclusive, affordable, efficient and safe. The components of the Aishman Bharat Digital Mission includes a unique health ID which is to identify, authenticate and thread the information of an individual across multiple systems and the stakeholders. The Healthcare Professional Registry is a repository of all the healthcare professionals across the nation. The Health Facility Registry is a repository of all the available healthcare facility across the country. The Personal Health Record is an electronic record of all the health related information of an individual which can be accessed only with the consent of an individual. The Aishman Bharat Digital Mission aims to bridge the existing gap among various stakeholders of the healthcare ecosystem through the digital highway as depicted in the figure. As such, Aishman Bharat Digital Mission aims to create a seamless online platform through the provision of wide range of data, information and the infrastructure services. Thank you. Last but not the least, I will be enlightening you all on reopening of schools and COVID-19. Implication of school closure on children reduce physical activity and poorer diet, increased level of anxiety and self-harm, exposure to domestic violence. For many children, the alternative to schools are child labor, child marriage and teenage pregnancy. Research evidence suggests that data from Indian states reveal a risk of infection in children similar to adults with, but with a much lower risk of moderate to severe disease. Data from 15 countries on school reopening have revealed that no significant increase in transmission can be linked to school attendance. Recommendation by various organizations, WHO, IAPSM. School closure should be in exceptional circumstances and temporary measures of last resort. Linking the school to local health facility, strengthen the school health program, proper ventilation in classroom, no morning assembly for the entire school and the training teachers to identify respiratory symptoms. School should be the last to close and the first to reopen. Thank you. With that, we conclude the public health updates for the month of September 2021. Our team, the Team for Stallers, comprise of Dr. Emmanuel Joshua, Dr. J. Vinodini, 
डॉक्टर बी लावन्या डॉक्टर फरहान खान डॉक्टर अनिला वर्गीस डॉक्टर रितिका वर्मा एंड माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर मालती एम अ स्पेशल वर्ड ऑफ ग्रेटिट्यूड टू डॉक्टर इमानुअल जोशवा फॉर दावर पॉइंट एंड विजुअल्स एंड टू डॉक्टर अनिला वर्गीस फॉर दाइन कॉर्डिनेशन We take this opportunity to sincerely thank our advisors, Dr. Malatesh Undi, Dr. Sanjeev Kumar, Dr. Parag Chavda, and Dr. A. M. Kadri for the persistent support and encouraging us to this platform. We also wish to extend our sincere gratitude to the senior IAPSM office bearer members. Thank you for your time, and hope you all have been positively enlightened by the updates for September 2021. Academia IAPS Me Connect will soon come out with the updates for the month of October 2021. Kindly subscribe to our channel Academia IAPS Me Connect by clicking on the bell icon next to the video. Till we meet again, stay connected and stay safe. Thank you.